what's up everybody welcome back to the channel and today we're back on the Corolla the speedometer gear did not fix it did not get rid of the code so next step is to do the actual um, torque converter clutch solenoid I got it out where did I put it oh right here it's right there and 35250-12030 and just so you know we are going off what the TSB recommends to do for this and we did contact Toyota about doing this right here and they said we're doing the correct steps they said start the gear then go to solenoid and solenoid don't fix it then you go to transmission assembly yeah. I really don't want to pull this out. I mean, it's not that hard. It's just... It's more work than it should be, I would say. I can get this out. And show y'all what it looks like. Sorry, I'm using my teeth because I only have one hand at the moment. I'm holding the camera. That, that is it. Made in your pond. They said this is an updated sensor as well, I believe. That is what it looks like. O-ring, two bolts hold it, and a connector. And we always start out by draining the fluid. 14 millimeter. If I can get you in here, 14 millimeter, drain that. Then 10 millimeters all around the perimeter. I think there's 18 or 20, something like that. So let's drain fluid. Then we can pull the pan off. There is a gasket, no silicone. Makes life easier. So let me drain it, pull the pan off. I'll show you exactly where it's at. Hopefully this is a little bit easier fix and we don't have to pull the valve body or anything like that. So let me do that. I'm out of breath because it's cold and I hate cold weather. So there was 18 bolts on the pan and the way we're going to do this, the solenoid is actually right here on the corner. These two 10 millimeters, you got a connector and you should be able to pull it out. You should have room to pull it back this way. And I'm going to check this wire, just kind of make sure everything's good with it, make sure there's nothing acting funny on there. But you just take these two 10s that connector off and then you can pull the whole solenoid out. I may actually pull the bolts then pull the solenoid and then take the connector off because it is a little tight getting up in here. So let me yank these out real quick. So I don't know how well y'all can see this but I got two bolts out right here and now come out a lot easier than I thought it would. Of course the pin is brittle. There's a little tab you push down and this pulls right out. There is your solenoid. It's just a one wire solenoid. I lubed up the o-ring on this already. Now I'm gonna slide the connector back in. And the connector is a lot tighter on this one. Oh, there you go, you just hear that little pop. We're going to start these by hand, and it doesn't matter which one you use, they're the same bolts. They are really long. And you're going to want to torque these to, I think it's 11 or 12 foot pounds. So it don't take much. Because it is just a valve body bolt. I'm just gonna run them in. And then I'll torque them down. And once I torque that down, we'll put the pan bolts on and torque those down. Those torque to the same torque as the valve body. Pan is on. We're going to spray it off a little bit with some brake cleaner just to get all the fluid off. Make sure your drain plug is tight. Now we come down with it 
Dobra, usunuję. Calls for about four quarts. Uh, don't think we have any. Let me run next door to the parts store. If I go to O'Reilly's and a sponsor, that's just where I go. And they are right next door to the shop. So I'm gonna walk over there real quick, grab some fluid, I'll be right back. Alright, so we're back. Got the transmission fluid, I got a gallon of it. Fill her up. It says 3.6 I put three and a half in here crank it up let it warm up and then we will check it make sure everything is full if it's your first time draining it and all that just put two in it and then check it because you don't want to overfill it because too much fluid in transmission or an engine is just as bad as not enough because then it starts to um, aerate the fluid and it can cause like cavitation and windage and all that other stuff that goes along with that. Especially in the engine. Windage is a big horsepower robber, and especially if it's cold outside, throw it around like I did. But if it's cold outside, it can really make it hard for the engine to warm up properly. I'm just gonna stick that in there while I crank it up. So we went through all the gears and everything and checked the fluid. Everything is good. It ended up taking the whole four quarts. And as it heats up, the fluid is going to expand and it's going to come up to stick about an inch on the, uh, to the hot mark. Because this does have a cold and a hot mark. I always forget that this one has that. So you can fill it up to the cold and once it gets warm, check it again just to make sure that it, the hot mark it is full. But this is going to conclude the video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please let me know in the comment section. I'll get to them as soon as possible. And if I have any tips or tricks, let me know as well. I do have short pack stickers and all that good stuff. And y'all remember, talk the site, and y'all have a great day.